Hello and welcome to episode four of MCCM's Mates Rates podcast. Tonight we have got Lydia Shawcross with us, the founder and owner of Gemstone Cheer and Dance. Hello Lydia, how are you doing? You okay? Hi, good thanks. How are you? Good, I am very, very well. So um, today's podcast is a friendly informal chat. It's all about your business, yep. how you would rate your setup and just to impart a little bit of advice really with people who are watching it and listening to it and maybe want to start up their own business one day. So we'll get straight into it, okay? Question one is all about your startup experience. So tell us a little bit about Gemstone Dance, how you started it, why you started it, and then at the end of it, if you'd like to rate it one to ten on the experience of your setup. Right, okay. Um, God, it's a long one. So I've obviously been involved in like dance and cheerleading from being tiny. Uh, but there was nothing around here in the area. So mum and parents and family used to take me to the other side of Manchester. Really? So that's where I used to go and train. Did all that up until leaving school. When I was in school, I didn't, I was never really academic. <laughs> um, classroom life wasn't really for me. So when I left school, I went to get a full-time job. So I never did the, like college or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um, and it was when I started my full time job that I then had to pack in doing the dancing because I couldn't. I could, but I was driving myself, and I realised work. You're not finishing. You finish school at half three. You yeah. finish work at five six. I couldn't travel all that way to carry on doing the training, so I dragged it in. Then I'm trying to think. I went from I was never really like so when I left school, I never knew what I wanted to do. So I was always just like floating from job to job yeah so I was in a car garage working at the time really doing what I wasn't fixing cars I'm not like clever <laughs> <laughs> what you were like reception front of house like the admin type oh, side okay yeah it. yeah I didn't um, have you as like a greasy overalls no, kind of person no, no not that clever so mum was away my parents were away on holiday at the time and I lost my job and I remember crying my eyes out thinking it was the end what of the world what did you do to lose your job um no, I got made redundant. It wasn't oh, anything okay, I'd yeah, done. Yeah, the job didn't yeah. the job didn't exist anymore. Oh, it sounded it a bit more actually, sinister. No, that, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, no, I didn't do anything. Um, and then it was in that time that I thought, like, what? Mum kept mum came back off holiday. I spoke with my pa- grandparents. They were like, "What do you want to do?" But I was eighteen at the time. No one knows. Well, some people know what they want to do, but I didn't have a clue still at eighteen what I wanted yeah. to do. So I was applying for jobs and it was in that time I said to mum, whatever I want to do, I want to see if I can try and do dancing again. So mum suggested, why don't you go and do all your coaching qualifications? So I thought, go on then, I have nothing to lose. So I went and did all my coaching qualifications for the like dance side of it all. Yeah. I got another job at the time. So growing up, I had the two hobbies, like the cheerleading and I had horses. So they were like the two things I was dead passionate about. So I got another job at the time working in an equestrian sales like online thing so I kind of enjoyed that because it was like to do with the horses yeah and but I'd already started like getting my qualifications and sending the flyers out for to create gemstone but I thought I'm gonna go for it anyway because I wanted the kids in the area that I like around here to experience what I experienced that are not fortunate enough to be able to travel all that way so did it I used to I set up out of a high school low and high school one night a week on a Monday um did two hours, I had two classes, I had a nine and under and a ten and over and I was working full time still at this equestrian place um, and I just did it for fun, like I literally didn't take a penny out of it for two years, I just went after school, after school, after work, um, did the classes, the money that came in paid for the hire in the venue, um, my grandma at the time, so obviously a pair of poms, they cost like 40 odd, 40 odd pounds, you're looking for a pair of pom poms. Um, so my grandma actually made pom poms for me out of bin liners, and they were actually really good. <laughs> but because I didn't, I didn't have the money f- that it wasn't bringing in the money to to buy them. So yeah, started really from nothing, and just I just rolled with it. I think that's great. Because with, I think f- identifying a gap in the market from your own personal experience is like the way to start anything. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot, a lot of successful businessmen and business women they find something that is required in an area or a town or a city that isn't necessarily catering for that sort of thing at the moment Mm -hmm. or they think they can do it better than people that are doing it in that area and set it up to take over. So I think that 
what you've done is you've kind of set something up that nobody else had done in the area, but nobody else has done since really, have they? You've not really got many competitors in the no. area, have you? No, I mean, there is a few, obviously, when you go a bit further afield, but doing the pom dance, which is what I started to do, not just the cheerleading, um, there was nothing, there's yeah. like nothing within the air. But I did it because I wanted to carry on doing it. I never set it up for, I'm going to do this to make money. Or so I'm it was for selfish reasons, really. Yeah, but, it yeah. was. <laughs> worked, out pretty, pr worked out pretty well for you, though, hasn't it? I mean, yeah, I'm just doing all right now. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't grumble too much. And your poor nan's fingers were knackered yeah, from, making for making pom-poms. Yeah. So in, in terms of, obviously, your set-up experience, obviously it was out of, not necessity, but it was more of like a want to do this because mm -hmm. you wanted to go back to something that you love doing. Yeah, and yeah. it was either horses or cheerleading, and you don't see many cheerleading horses, so it's not like you could combine <laughs> the two, is it, really? So, I mean, Although that'd be pretty niche. Be, yeah, yeah, maybe that's it? my next venture. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's one for the books. But, I mean, in terms of, obviously, setting everything up, so tell us a little bit about... What happened after Lowton? I mean, obviously that was your, your, your first yeah. start-up experience, but it, it kind of grew quite rapidly from there, didn't it? Yeah, so I was at, was at Lowton High School. I did the first year, and I had 13 dancers. That was it. So all I'd oh, really? done was these little flyers to just give to the school and the local shops and stuff. I never pushed it. Um, so we had 13 dancers. And then the second year came and I got a group of, which is quite interesting, there was a group of five younger girls that were all four and five that wanted to join. But they were too young really to go with like the nine-year-olds. So I created a third team. Um, and then we started up picking up training in Croft as well. So I took the teams to the first competition. They all came dead last because they'd all just been doing a one yeah, hour a week yeah. training and I'd been coming straight from work, like getting changed in the toilets whilst my mum like said hello to everyone. It was like dead rushed so I thought they need to do some more training if this is the route that because you know they were all saying we want to do this like yeah. we want to do the comps um anyway then f four of them or three of them dancers that joined on that third year are now world champions and 11. So, so they've stayed with you all this time? Yeah yeah about probably there's probably about eight or nine of the original girls that are still there now seven years later. Oh that's um, brilliant I mean previous guests that we've had on as well they, they talk about they set the business up not really thinking that it would go anywhere mm. and then they go on to speak about the longevity of people that have joined the business and then they're still with them to this day which is brilliant so your startup experience obviously you did it like i've just said before about because of your love of the dance because yeah, of your, yeah. your fact that the fact that you wanted to go back to something that you were really keen on as a kid so rate your startup experience from kind of one to ten and when i say rate it I obviously want you to take into account the, the knowledge that you had to set up a business, the actual desire to own a business versus just wanting to dance. What what would you rate it? Minus five. <laughs> Minus, yeah. <laughs> I knew nothing. I'd like literally, like I said, I did it because I wanted to just do it for fun. Yeah. Um, it was only really after we left low and high. So it was third year in we got the opportunity for a unit in the local mill um so obviously we snatched it up and knew at the time it was a bit of a jump like yeah. didn't know how it was going to work out I had to leave my full-time job because it just needed completely like painting gutting all the family came in helping it all out and it was then when I moved to the mill that we branched out I um, took on another coach to offer a different style of dance and then started doing the cheerleading, the pom dance and the lyricals. We started opening it up to more. Um, and it was from then, really, that we had a little bit of a turn. Um, and that's when it came more like it was, you know, a business kind of thing. I mean, I still carried on at working. I was working part-time at the NHS. So I went from going full-time to part-time just so I could put a bit more effort into it. And it was only three, two or three years ago that I left part-time and now I just do it full-time. Yeah, well, I think it, it's testament to people's commitment to something because when I've spoken to people in the past and I've spoken to other business owners, they say that when they started their business as it is now, no matter how successful it is or wherever stage it is, they always had like a 
part-time job or a side mm-hmm. hustle to kind of fund that mm-hmm. dream mm-hmm. and I don't think that you're on your own I know I, I know I'm not I mean I, I used to DJ to try and get extra money to buy equipment and stuff I wasn't very good at it I'm not gonna <laughs> lie to you but it was extra cash in my pocket to try and fund the marketing business and Obviously, now that business is, is four, nearly five years old. And how, old, how old's Gemstone now? Seven next month. Seven. Well, happy birthday for next month. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so over the period of time, over the last seven years, obviously, we've been through a lot as a country, as a, as a world. Over the mm. last few years, COVID would have had a massive kind of impact on a lot of stuff that people have done, especially business owners. So tell us what the biggest challenge is that you've come up against and then rate it once you've told us the story about it. So really, going along the path of how it all went over the years, we moved into the mill and we was there for probably about a year. And then I think that's when I faced the biggest challenge that I'd had. So I was working, COVID, lockdown. I think a lot of businesses struggled through yeah, all yeah. that. But obviously we went on to, we had to shut the unit, but the rent still needed paying and all the bills and everything. So we went on to Zoom, like a lot of people did. So I was doing like online Zoom classes for the kids. Um we offered it to parents to pay, like, if they wanted to carry on paying, pay half fees, or I was doing some for free, so that, obviously, it wasn't excluding anybody. Because, yeah, yeah. um, obviously, like I said, I, I always set Gemstone up because I wanted for the like for the kids to do it. It was never for money, but, obviously, I needed that to pay the rent. And then we was probably, I think it was about two or three weeks before the lockdown was ending and we could come back out of lockdown and the mill that was in got shut down um for fire eggs so we couldn't go back in um so i lost the gym just before i could reopen um so i was rushing around like a mad woman trying to find somewhere else um and then we ended up hiring a like local hall just to for the layover and it was in, I remember I was crying, I, I do a lot of crying to my mum, but I was crying my eyes out <laughs> in my mum's kitchen. And I knew that that then I could have just jacked it in then and thought, do you know what, I'm not doing it anymore. Like I had the perfect opportunity, so I'd lost that, it locked down, it happened. I could have just said, no, we're not going back, but I didn't. I ended up finding where we are now, which is like an even bigger unit. And everyone said I was crazy at the time taking it on, but it worked yeah, out for the best. I think it's the same as anything, isn't it? You have to commit. And if you don't commit, you never know what's going to happen because there's no shame in failure. I mean, mm. I tell my kids this, I tell my staff this. Like, if you fail at something, it's just a learning experience. So even if you'd have took that unit on and failed, it just gives you an opportunity to learn how not to do something. And then the next yeah. time round, you just do it better. But obviously, it didn't fail. No, no. You, uh, three years now we've been in that unit. So, yeah, we took that. Again, I had to paint it all, fl- do all the flooring. I like to get units, you know, need a lot of graft <laughs> yeah. from the family. Yeah, maybe your side hustle could be decorating <laughs> know, or yeah. something like that, it yeah. Be. yeah. Um, but, yeah, then I think we moved in there, expanded even more, took on another two coaches, started, like, doing sc- classes in schools, and then it's just the last 12 months that have been a bit crazy, really. Yeah, so before we go into like the last 12 months, um, you had to go through quite a lot in that kind of phase of COVID and it had a domino effect for a number of things that Mm. has ultimately led you to where you are now. So rate how hard it was an experience between one and 10. Um, It's hard. I'd say it was probably like a two. And the only reason I'd say that it was a two was I was fortunate because... I was still at home, so I didn't have the pressures of my own life, you know, like house bills or, you know, like that. I I was, I had the comfort of being at home with parents still, that when I went through all that. Do you know what I've found? Like, when I'm asking people, like, to rate their most, I might actually take this question out, because maybe, (laughs) maybe it's just me who's, like, a worrier, and I find things harder to cope with, but I think proper business people of which I still don't class myself as a proper business person they have a way of overcoming obstacles and they never rate those obstacles as any higher than a five because ultimately they've dealt with them and they've overcome them and they've pushed past and they don't Mm -hmm. look back Mm -hmm. whereas sometimes I dwell a little bit too much on things but you don't seem like that kind of person no I do and there must be at least twice a week that I say I give up I'm (laughs) leaving this place (laughs) and like what no, I think I look back and it was always in the moment. It felt a lot worse than it was. 
Yeah, and I think hindsight's a beautiful thing, isn't it? When yeah. you look back at something and you think, you know what, I've gone from that to where I am now, which is a nice little segue mm. into telling us about your current business and where it is and how happy you are running it and obviously what's gone on over the last 12 months. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I did a little bit of a similar thing. So when I was working at the doctor's surgery, I did an apprenticeship along the side of that when I was working part-time, purely because I'd left school I had no qualifications other than what yeah. I'd got at school. Um, and I w- Gemstone wasn't as big as it is. Well, I don't like to say it because it's not really, but... Uh, oh, Gemstone but, but wasn't listen, what it is now. <laughs> it, it, it is a big thing. I mean, we, we, you know, we're not bringing people like, you know... Bill Gates on this podcast, but we're bringing people who are legitimately successful in what they've done, and that's obviously why we've brought you on. And not having any qualifications is no shame at all. I mean, I was numb as a piss stone at school. <laughs> I was like, I was good at chasing girls and chasing footballs, and I've I'm now married, and I, I, I'm not a professional footballer, so I'm not very good at either of them. Am I? <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of where you've got to, it, it, it's. You don't need qualifications. I think street smarts and knowledge comes through experience, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So talk talk us through the last 12 months on, obviously, how was, you've got to yes. where you've got to since all the obstacles that you've, you've faced. Yeah, so um, obviously when I was, I did a similar thing to this probably about two years ago now. Um, and one of the questions I got asked was, what's next? And I said that I want to, um, improve like the community links you know within like gemstone yeah. to like the local community so obviously since lockdowns and stuff we couldn't like every year we'll do like the little kids will do the santa parade or they'll do like the christmas light switch on or they'll perform at like school fairs you know like all the stuff that like the little ones will like we had a meeting with our board and was looking at all the numbers of like the people like ages of the people that are joining and then like those that are leaving and it was a massive drop for like young girls that were like 16 17 in like dropping off doing the sport so I was like I need something that's gonna keep them on you know like something other than just going doing the competitions and like I mean a lot of them do stay just for that but I thought I need a different edge to it um so yeah we got in touch with Lee Centurions at the time spoke to Derek and uh yeah, started dancing there, so that was the first thing. Then didn't have a clue what was to come with it then being Lee Leopards. Yeah. I mean, I did and I didn't. I didn't know what was coming, but I was in as much as I could be. Um, so obviously then, because Lee told the mascot and then the dancers became Lee Leopards dancers, which has improved the rate of people staying at that age massively. Yeah, so talk, talk a little bit about Lee before we go into obviously... Y- your own personal successes that you've you've come across over the last 12 months. I mean, Lee, since getting back into the Super League and since rebranding as Leopards, and we're not going to make it about them, we're going to make it about you, like Gemstone Dance and the Leopards Dancers have become a massive part of the game day experience and everybody knows who you are mm. now because you're walking around with Leto babysitting them constantly. <laughs> so <laughs> so you're the one who guides them around so they don't fall over. But Leto's care. Yeah, so I mean... That, that experience in itself must have like propelled the business massively over the last, I think it's 12 months now since they rebranded. Yeah, yeah. So it was like earlier this year, they rebranded and we joined at the end of the season before, so not just at the end of Lee Centurions. Um, but yeah, it made a massive impact on Gemstone, massive. Like I said, the number of um, dancers and members that stay now that are like 17, 18, that normally drop off, they do stay because they've got that different, massive thing I think that'll, prove what difference it made was we recently did a video with some of the leopards dancers who were also all gemstone dancers so they go to do like the competitions and stuff and they said um like oh we've had a good year this year like you know what's been your highlight and one of them sat there rhymed the date off what date it was in february that we did the opening explained about the smoke in the tunnel and loved bursting through the paper with the mascot and like they just how many months on and they remember everything about it so it's obviously been a massive thing for him and then another one was mentioning about like dancing at Wembley and yeah they've had like great experiences from it all so yeah it's been I think that's another good thing about being a business owner like yourself is you you get so much gratification out of creating experiences for the people Mm -hmm. who come to you as well um which you can obviously see like being part of the club and being in the stands as well and watching you you can see on the faces of the girls when they're dancing that they're buzzing to be there Mm -hmm. which is great so 
outsidely, you've had another massive success. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about the success that Gemstone has had. Yeah, so we went to a competition in May last year. Um, so all the competitions that Gemstone go and do, and we normally do about four or five a year, you like competing against people all across the country. And um, there's like divisions for all the ages and all the different styles. And um, if you win Grand Champs, which is like the highest scoring team of the day, and not on all the comps, but some of the competitions, um, they offer like bids, so invitations to go either dance at Europeans or go and dance at Worlds. So our youth POM team, who are 11, 10 and 11, yeah, 10 and 11, they won a bid to go to Florida this year and dance for the All-Star World Championships. So realised they won it. This was last year. I remember I was in the I was in Manchester airport at the time checking in. I was going on holiday and I had this email come through and I ju- it just stopped. I didn't. I was trying to ring my mum to tell my mum, like, no mum, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I was like, how has this even happened? Um, my partner at the time was screaming at me, telling me to get the cases on the thing and I was like, oh, like it's all shaking. Um, and I even ummed and ahed and I was like, do I tell him? Do I not? Because I thought, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get to Florida? Because it was going to cost a lot. They don't pay for them all to go. They get so much, you know, like off the competition, but travel and whole hotel and all that anyway we had a meeting told the kids had a meeting with the parents and we set this goal that last year right we'll go and we'll just go for fun we'll go and the kids can enjoy it um so we did like loads of fundraising had all over like local businesses chip in to pay for like the costumes and the ponds and it was great I mean, I mean would I do it again yeah I'd do it again but if you'd asked me just before I went, I probably would have said no because it was one big stress. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we always said that we'd go for fun. So we went over there. We were there for 10 days. We had two days training, two days at the competition, a team bonding day at the water park, which it all sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Um, but it, I, I actually came home for four days and then had to go on holiday I remember again you went away, didn't for you? For a holiday because I thought that was not a holiday. It was yeah. just so much of a roller coaster. Um, but yeah, basically they competed on the first day and you have to play so high to get through to the second day. Um, they competed. I remember one of the girls cried their eyes out because they made a mistake and was like, oh, it's the end of the world. Anyway, we all sat and waited in the venue for them to text us what ta- like if they'd got through. Um, cause that's all we'd gone with the aim of right we're going to finish high enough to dance again and I remember sitting there and I was waiting and waiting I kept refreshing I kept refreshing anyway it come through and they were sitting in first place and then they danced again and they ended up winning it so world champions oh, world champions. so you went to America the home of cheerleading mm-hmm. bossed it came back world champs mm-hmm. which is fantastic in it and then obviously off the back of that world championship you got to dance at Wembley as well yeah. in the the, the challenge cup final so mm. it's been a busy year for you hasn't it yeah yeah, yeah and moving been. house as well oh, no. <laughs> so all this stuff so oh, no. i think obviously that is that is brilliant and finishing on a high of, of obviously championships and dancing at somewhere as grand as Wembley I mean how do you top that moving forward now I know I knew you was going to say this what's next because I just don't <laughs> know how am I going to have another I don't know I don't know how I'm going to top it but I'm sure I'll I can all think of something. We've already got stuff in the pipeline. Um, potentially dancers going to Barcelona or Germany next year. So oh, wow. We'll see. So rate rate your business happiness right now. So from the stress of setting up and only having 13 dancers to having however many you have now, world champs and a bigger unit, how happy are you in your business life right now? I think, I mean, coming on here today and looking back and sitting and talking about it, I've made a massive difference. I think sometimes you do forget how far you've come, don't you? Yeah. Um, but yeah, 200 and odd dancers and members and four coaches working for me. I mean, I am happy. I'm, I'm, I am very happy. I think the one thing that I do need to focus more on over the next 12 months is delegating and actually living It's tough my as life. a boss, though, isn't it, to delegate? I know. It is tough. So I, I, on, a, on a scale of one to ten, you say you're happy and no one ever says ten because always mm. people are trying to strive to do better or achieve better goals. But how happy are you now on a scale of one to ten? Um, a six, but I've had a good night at work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's dictated your mood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six but or seven, yeah. That's brilliant, that's brilliant. I think um, anyone who wants to check out 
Gemstone Cheer and Dance. Um, get on social media. They are on there. We'll share their uh, their tags and their handles when we post out the podcast. Mm-hmm. And we'll make sure that you hopefully get a few more future world champs joining you. Yeah, fingers crossed. Very good. Oh, thank you very much for coming on, Lydia. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for asking me. Cheers.